Welcome to the Radiate Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Clemens Hoffman. Each week we will discuss tools, tips, and ways to radiate your best life ever, interviewing practitioners, authors, and luminaries to help you on your path. Wellness, joy, peace, abundance. What do you want to radiate? All right, we are here this evening with Janet Lee, who does Chinese medicine, acupuncture, cupping, herbs. Have I left anything out? No. No, that's fantastic. Moxa. Moxa? Yeah. Yeah, um, we'll talk about that in a minute. So, um, you know, Janet is one of the practitioners at Centered Spirit, and um, so we work together. And so tell me... um, Tell me more about what this is you do. So you do all of these things, and you talked about moxa as mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, well, I'm a licensed acupuncturist, mm-hmm. and I'm a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. Mm-hmm. So I use all the different modalities involved in Chinese medicine. Chinese medicine is a, is a whole medical system, mm-hmm. and it involves acupuncture, herbs, cupping, moxibustion, things like that. So... Um, I have a variety of different tools in my toolkit, and also, in addition, I do yoga, and I do corrective exercise with my patients who are coming in for injuries and things like that as well. Oh, how interesting. Now, when you say a doctor of Chinese medicine, mm-hmm. so is that a, uh, is there a, a title with that, or is it doctor, is it um, like a PhD, is it like an MD, is there a Right, there are different levels, and the, the industry, the acupuncture, I don't want to say industry, but the field itself is changing, right. much like the physical therapy field is changing changing. So anymore, you just don't come out with a degree in physical therapy. You go on and get your doctor of physical therapy, your DPT, which is considered what's called a first professional doctorate. Yeah. Um, same thing. Chiropractors have always had that. They come out and they're a doctor of chiropractic. Right. So now acupuncture is going toward that. So a, a lot of schools are transitioning. So you will come out with a doctor of acupuncture in Chinese medicine. It depends on the state. Some state you may not do herbs, in which case you'd be a doctor of acupuncture. I mean, it just... It varies state by state. It can be very complicated. But there also are those people that go to these generally two-year full doctoral programs where you will immerse yourself in a certain area, whether it's geriatrics or women's health or sports medicine or whatever it is, and get a really in-depth doctor. And that's more, that's considered a doctor of oriental medicine. Really? So it, it all gets very confusing, but there are, yeah, there are two different kind of doctoral pathways you can take. I have the one that's considered the first professional doctorate. Right. And then, but some states don't recognize it. So in California, I would be considered a doctor, but in other states, I'm not considered a doctor. So I don't often call myself, you know, Dr. Dr. Lee, Lee, but depending on where I am, I could, but at least I know I have that credential. Mm-hmm. I know I'm kind of up to date and and current with the way my industry, my field is going. Mm -hmm. And is it something you need to renew every so often? You have to keep up on the In order for different state certifications and state licenses and national board certifications, you have to get a certain amount of CEUs Mm -hmm. every year. So I have a national board certification that both Missouri and Kansas take. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also certified still as a licensed acupuncturist in California, and I will probably never lose that because it was extremely difficult to get. (laughs) And I also have a specialty certification in oriental um, reproductive medicine. I was going to ask you about that. That's your specialty, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Reproductive medicine. I do a lot of women's health and specifically fertility. So Mm -hmm. I I knew I wanted to do that. So I went and got my... um, um, it's considered a fellow of the American Board of Oriental Medicine. So mm-hmm. they have a very strong emphasis on the Western side. So right. when a patient comes to me, I understand what they're going through. If they're going through assisted reproductive techniques, I know right. exactly what's happening. I know what drugs they're using. I know how those drugs affect the body. And so I can treat them a little more fully, I think, in many cases than somebody who maybe doesn't know exactly what's going on. Right. Theoretically, you can go to any acupuncturist and they should be able to treat you depending on what your Chinese medical diagnosis is. Right. I think it's always helpful to have that extra expertise to really fully understand what's what's happening from a Western perspective because there is so much medical management going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, there is. Yeah, I, I don't know if you know this about me, but I had been through that whole journey. Right, I Ended right. up adopting, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's um, quite in-depth. And, you know, people who are wanting to conceive, wanting to start their family, they'll mm-hmm. try a variety of things. Yeah. And um, so how does, how does what you do fit in with Western medicine? When do you jump in? 
how do you time it with what people might be doing right, in fertility? Right. Often I'll get people coming to me saying, well, you know, we've been trying and it's not really working. Or maybe they'll come and say, well, we're just starting to think about trying. Right. Or sometimes they come and say, I've got an IVF transfer planned for next week or next month. <laughs> so I get people at all different stages. And what I try to do as much as possible is educate people. And ideally, we really want a few months to work with somebody to right. get to get you ready, especially if you know you've had some trouble already, if you've been trying to conceive for a year or two years, depending on what's going on. We know there are issues, so I just try to get the body ready if they're going to go ahead and go through assisted reproductive techniques or get them ready, and maybe they don't have to go. A lot of times people might get pregnant before they go through that kind of thing. Right. Which is the dream, of course, to, right. to make that happen. So um, I use acupuncture. I work a lot with herbs with women who are going through this, and men too. Occasionally they tend to be less willing to so it works with men as well yeah especially yeah really acupuncture and the herbs as well because in so many cases there's a male subfertility or infertility aspect of it as well Mm -hmm. um and everyone can always be healthier whether it's through a lot of lifestyle changes you know diet exercise things like that that we can adjust to really kind of um perfect or idealize this whole hormonal hormonal milieu that we have going on inside of us that will help with conception yeah oh my gosh it's amazing that anyone conceives it's just i know sometimes it seems so complicated and then of course in other cases it's just so simple it's so so simple (laughs) it can be really frustrating for people but i really enjoy it and this those people who kind of commit to the three-month program of coming in for their treatments and we really I treat by by phase of the cycle for the most part right um because there are different things happening in your body you know men not so much but women certainly different phases of the cycle and um hopefully get people prepared so when they go into IVF they just need one one you know pass at it and everything's good but you know it's a process just like everything else so just trying to get people at their best health-wise Right. Yeah, that helps too. Of mm-hmm. course, to be healthy and be able to yeah. go through that. Now, is fertility be- why you got into acupuncture and Chinese medicine? No, no. I was um, in publishing. I still am in publishing. I do a lot of freelance writing and editing, and I had done that for many, many years. And I'd always I was specializing in fitness and health, and I'd written a ton of stories about how to firm your biceps and how to flatten your or firm your backside and flatten your abs and all these things. I mean, I've written hundreds and hundreds of stories like that. And I just really wanted to have more of an impact on people than just telling them how to flatten their abs. Because in the whole scheme of things, it doesn't really matter that much. So (laughs) don't tell anyone I said that in the magazine world. But, um, So I just want to have more impact. I've always been interested in medicine. I'm fascinated by how the body works. I really firmly believe that the body wants to be healthy. It has an innate directive to be healthy, and we just need to hopefully tweak it a little bit to get it there. Right, exactly. Just kind of guide it gently. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. I firmly believe in, you know, everyone has different energy about them and, and in them, and just being able to control that energy, I'm just kind of fascinated with that, too. So Yeah. I um. And there were things shifting within the publishing career. I was based in New York City and knew I wasn't going to be able to probably do that at that level I was at for a long time, just considering how things were changing. And so I just made a career leap. That was quite a leap of faith. Yeah, yeah. And I also, one of my other specialties is sports medicine, orthopedics, that kind of thing. So my fitness background, um, I really enjoy working with athletes and just working with people who have pain. And uh, oftentimes with acupuncture and some corrective exercise, it can really make a big difference. Yeah, full disclosure, you helped me with my shoulder. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Right, right. And um, so why acupuncture as opposed to any other form of wellness or discipline? I guess I knew I didn't want to go through the long, complicated process of Western medicine at first. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that acupuncture and Chinese medicine was a long, complicated process (laughs) as well. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, I have nothing against Western medicine. I think it definitely has its place and does very good, is very good at things. But I just felt like I would be able to accomplish more with a different style of medicine. Mm-hmm. And um, I was raised when I was younger. We spent a lot of time in Asia. And maybe some of that rubbed off. I didn't realize mm-hmm. it. Maybe I didn't want it to rub off, but somehow it did anyway. So I've sure. kind of always had that in my blood. 
um, it just resonated with me. I had met somebody many years before who was going into oriental medicine or Chinese medicine and and it just I remember going, oh, okay, that's great, you know, and filed it way in the back of my head, mm-hmm. never thought of it again. And when I was trying to think of what to do for my next career step, it just kind of bubbled to the surface. And I sat with it for a long time and it just resonated. And I just thought it was the right thing. That's, that's awesome. How long have you been doing it? I have been practicing now. I've been out of school for four years. Mm-hmm. So I've been seating, seeing patients for about five years because our last year in school we're seeing quite a, quite a big mm-hmm. yeah, rotation with patients. Um, and I've been here in Kansas City for just over two years now. Right, because you came from California, mm-hmm. is that right? Yeah, California. I got out of school in San Diego and then I went up to L.A. to practice for a couple of years, which was you know, lovely. Mm-hmm. And then just decided that it wasn't the, I mean, I think about a third of all practicing acupuncturists practice in California or something I, like that. It's yeah. a crazy number. Or maybe a third of acupuncturists in general. They may not be practicing, but um, it's wonderful in certain respects because you're considered a physician in terms of workman's comp and you're considered a primary care provider, I think, really? in terms of um, some insurance systems. It just varies. But um, so it's very accepted. Most, I mean, oh pretty much goodness. all the insurance is accepted. It's considered an essential health benefit under Obamacare. That may be changing. I'm not sure. But um, so it's a great environment to practice in from that respect. Except you get paid so much less money because of the insurance situation. Sure. And so you have to pretty much work twice as hard to make the same amount of money, and then you have to pay twice as much to live. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to live my life that way. I, I gave got out of the New York rat race so I could have a little more quality of life. And so I didn't right. want to be working, working, working just to pay my huge rent. Right. And an opportunity came up back here, and I have friends back here, and I decided to make the leap here. Oh, that's wonderful. And again, for those listening from out of town, we are based in Kansas City, Missouri, or we are here in Kansas City, Missouri. Centered Spirit, our office is in the Waldo District. And you also have a, an office in Lawrence, Yes, Kansas. I practice um, almost part-time or half the time over in Lawrence, Kansas as mm-hmm. well at a wonderful place over there called Southwind Health Collective. It has massage therapists, another acupuncturist, and they're just a wonderful, wonderful group of people. And that's a very um, alternative medicine-friendly town, yeah. definitely. It is. It's a college town. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of alternative uh Alternative health, massage, right. many types of wellness options. Exactly. You have healthy level, food, levels. everything. I mean, it's just, it's, I really, it really like how they lovely. do it over here. And, of course, I mean, I think in Missouri and Kansas we have good options as well. Especially, I think, right. we're really seeing that more and more in Kansas City. We are. We are. And then, but you, so you're having to be licensed in both states. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was one right. of the first, I think, 10 people to get my license in Kansas. Thanks really? to the very, very hard work of some people over in Kansas. Um, you could practice there. But mm-hmm. there wasn't a practice law, so, you know, if anything went wrong, God forbid, okay, there could be issues. Right. Because you weren't really acknowledged, but now they went through and they have a practice law, which means we have requirements for continuing education and we're recognized, things like that, So, which is a wonderful thing. Which is You wonderful. really want to be practicing in a place where there are clear guidelines and parameters and, and yeah. guidelines and yeah. there are, are and standards then, right as and well. then people know the public knows that they're going to go to somebody who has training and has you know jumped through these certain amount of hoops mm-hmm. so it should be much safer for people as well i would think so yeah and what type of considerations would people look for when they're searching for an acupuncturist do you think you know it varies it's one of those cases where i think you really need to kind of meet with the person and see mm-hmm. if you click because there are certain styles. There are so many different styles of acupuncture, so many different approaches, and you may not resonate with one person the way you do with another mm-hmm. person. You can always try to look at their website or call them and ask them about their training. Right. You can always you can easily search those schools and find out what the requirements are, see if they're accredited by the national board or you know organization. So it takes a little bit of digging, but um, it really comes down to you know what they say on their website does it make sense to you and then meeting with them do you feel like you have a good rapport you you have a good rapport that they're understanding you they're listening to you some people can be more abrupt some people you know take their time and take a much longer make a much longer treatment it just varies kind of what works for you right absolutely location and Mm -hmm. ease of scheduling and all that type of thing 
And, uh, and making sure wherever you're going is clean, of course. Oh, <laughs> you know? that is so important, yeah. right? Because yeah. you could possibly get an infection from... It would be difficult, but I mean, you could, I guess you could, you know, pick up some infections everywhere, but all the needles we use or should be using are, you know, sterile needles. They're only used once. They're never right. reused. Um, you know, it's a clean technique, so they're using alcohol to clean the site off first where they're going to be needling. Patient or practitioners wash their hands. It should just be, you know, a reasonable right. level. It's not going to be hospital surgical room cleanliness but right. it should be clean because yeah you don't want any risk of care you know hepatitis hv things like Absolutely. that which if you were reusing needles could be you know it's that a very very low risk with acupuncture but you just want to right. be safe and so um our okay so in acupuncture of course you're having needles placed in the mm-hmm. body and uh, so what are some considerations about that can it be painful for some people mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Some people it is painful. Some people they don't feel a thing. Generally, what we want is for people to feel what's called the chi sensation, mm-hmm. which may be kind of a dull, achy, warm, throbbing, spreading type of sensation. Right. I have patients who lay there and say, I didn't feel anything. I have patients who lay there and say, oh, I felt it move from here over down my arm, and then I went down my leg, and then I felt it around my belly. You know, they can just they describe to me very vividly how the energy is moving in their body. So generally, though, I don't feel it's painful at all. Sometimes there can be a sharp sensation as it goes through the first layer of skin. Mm -hmm. And then usually you feel that more achy or warm or dull sensation. Um, So that's that's what I generally tell patients. Um, There is always a risk of bruising. Typically, you know, we see that in some people more than others. If you're more compromised, maybe you're... Um, you know, limbs aren't working, maybe you have a stroke or something like that, sometimes mm-hmm. that can be a little more of a risk because there's a poor circulation. Right. Maybe if somebody's taking blood thinners or aspirin yeah, on a daily you basis. Yeah, see that more too. Some bleeding perhaps. Yeah, a little bit. I know I don't have, I have a lot of patients who are taking those and I don't, I haven't seen as much bleeding as that I would kind of expect to see. But, um, you know, that's certainly a risk. But generally, you know, it's not painful People come off the table feeling very relaxed. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's only been one person who had never had acupuncture before where he just could not settle down during the treatment. And finally, I just said, do you want me to take the needles out? And he said, yes. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> of I, course. I'm not here to force anybody into acupuncture. No, no harm and foul. some people just don't enjoy it. It tends to be the big, burly, muscly guys. Really? Who um, faint. Really? I mean, typically you're that's on a table, so, you know, nobody falls off the table, but they tend to get lightheaded, and we think that's right. because they have more chi and blood, and the more chi and blood that are moving, okay. it can be, you can get you dizzy, especially if you haven't eaten, but um, I think that's always so interesting, and it's often those big guys who are, don't like the needles, or, right. know, I've had big Navy guys who are like, I don't like needles, <laughs> so it's always interesting, but um, right. yeah, every, generally everybody who comes off the table just feels so much calmer. And so much better. Mm-hmm. And what do t- people typically see you for? I mean, besides fertility, mm-hmm. like what would be something that somebody would seek out acupuncture? Seek so out Chinese medicine. So many different things. It's really amazing. Um, I tend to go. I tend to really follow the research as far as what we know. Research can really help with. Mm-hmm. But there are so many things out there that haven't been studied yet, or that it's difficult to study. And the, it's just wide open. But we see a lot of pain. It's amazing for pain, and there's right. been so much research on that. Um, whether that's an injury, whether it's chronic pain, you know, both. Um, we see it a lot for migraines. Oh, really? Yeah, I think the National Headache Foundation or one of those groups has included it in their treatment guidelines. The National Some Allergy uh, Ear, Nose, and Throat group has included it for the treatment of allergies and the treatment guidelines, which mm-hmm. is amazing. Um, I know there are specialists in the U.S. who treat a lot of eye diseases, eye disorders. Yeah. Uh, glaucoma, macular degeneration, things like that, have really good success with that, which is incredible. Do you actually put them in and around the eyes? You can put them in and around the eyes safely. You can safely Safely. put them in. I don't recommend anyone do it. Never do it on your own, but you can have acupuncturists can do it. Whether they will do those points or not, they may not even do those points. Or if you said, I don't want you sticking needles anywhere near my eye, they may say, no problem. We can do it another way. Good. That's what I found about Chinese medicine mm-hmm. is that there are many, many roads to yeah. lead to the same result. Right, right. I could treat your shoulder without actually touching your shoulder. That's interesting. Although I prefer to touch the shoulder. Right, you know, Or wherever I'm treating. But um, you could treat it, use it for treating diabetes. I mean, there's a whole list of conditions that the NIH has put out 
saying what it what it has been shown to treat or what it's been um, studied for treating. Maybe we need a little more research, but it looks good. And there's different levels of research. Absolutely. Um, so so many amazing different conditions. I've had good luck with people who have um, urinary f- urgency. Really? I've worked with women who have placenta previa, so the uteruses or the placenta is attaching down, you know, lower, and there's a risk of hemorrhaging with birth, right. and seen that wow. move up substantially, you know, just mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks. Um, other pay or mentors of mine have worked with women who have um, had other issues, you know, threatened miscarriage, things like that, and been able right. to kind of stop that. And not, I mean, fibroids, endometriosis, of course, you know, almost anything you can think of. I try not to give false hope to people. Right. It's not the kind of thing where you're going to come in for one treatment and you're going to feel, you know, your problem's going to be solved depending on what's going on. If it's pain, often you might see a, a big difference. I see a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, mm-hmm. digestive dis- disorders, things like that. So right. it generally takes a few treatments, several treatments. And your acupuncturist should talk to you about that. Right. right. If they're saying, oh, we can tr- we can cure you, that's one of those that's things. That's a red flag. To run away because mm-hmm. we're not, very few people are allowed to say you can cure anything. But um, there's no guarantee. And there's never, any, there's no guarantee with Western medicine. Right, right. Right. Um, that we treat um, side effects of cancer. Oh, right. Fatigue. Um, neuropathy, yeah, not eating. Nod, yeah, nausea, vomiting, all that stuff, which is fantastic. I would never tell somebody to, you know, oh, don't go get treatment from right. your doctor if you have cancer. I would and get acupuncture instead. I would never say that. No. But, but once you're really getting help. treatment, yeah, I'm happy. I would love to be able to help with the side effects, things like that. Absolutely, so. Reiki does too. Of course, mm-hmm. I'm a Reiki master, and it helps with right. the nausea and the side effects. Um, so. Seeing as Reiki kind of works with our, well, it does work with our chi, works with our energy system, Mm -hmm. and Chinese medicine, oriental medicine does as well. What do you see are some of the difference between straight up energy medicine and the oriental Chinese methods? You know, I don't know enough about the other energy medicine traditions to make that comparison. I know Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. I have not studied the other forms. Good. Well, so so how does Chinese medicine work with the energy system? How does it work with the body? Our goal is to balance the energy in the body. If there's if there's a, something going on, you're experiencing whether it's bloating or depression or pain or whatever, something's out of balance. Something mm-hmm. if it's pain, we could say something is stuck. There's no free flow. There's going to be pain. So that maybe no free flow of chi. There may be maybe no free flow of blood. But our mm-hmm. goal is to move in general, depending on what the problem is, and restore stasis restore balance or not restore homeostasis basically restore balance in the system right so we use that or we use herbs for that we use needles for that um you know wherever whatever it may be cupping moxa all those things to try to restore that balance so it's pretty it's pretty straightforward right and kind of prompting your body to heal itself that's you know, the it's whole like, here, here's a little oh. nudge to help you. Exactly. Like, oh, I remember how this is supposed to go. I do this, yeah. I do this, and these hormones get released, and and things feel better. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned moxibustion mm-hmm. and cupping. Can you tell a little bit about that and how they work? Yeah. Cupping, you've probably seen, you know, Gwyneth Paltrow, Michael Phelps, uh, all sorts of people with these big, you know, red, purpley marks on their backs or wherever it is. Mm-hmm. And it's, I think of it as just a form of myofascial release. You know, you're, oh, really? You're, okay increasing um uh circulation right you know the blood flow and the blood flow through the skin you're uh, you know manipulating the fascia the muscles some people say it releases toxins i don't know what those toxins would be i do know that it removes it moves stasis i mean i just did okay. cupping on a patient and i cupped up and down her back and i said i will be able to tell you where your pain is by what I see from the cupping. Right, how red it is and what the patterns red, are. Yeah, because the more stasis or the more blood that comes up, the more I know that things are stuck there and that means there's pain. They need to move, right. So it was so, you know, so interesting to say, oh, you're, okay, it's your right side, low back, that's where the pain is, right? Mm-hmm. Said yes. Or in your right rhomboids, that's where the pain, right? Because it was, so they were purpley, they were red. Yeah. Where the other side, I did the same treatment on the other side and it was fine. And so how does, okay, for people who don't know what cupping is, or how it works. How do, how do you do that? How, what, what do you um, do? 
it, you, some people use silicone cups. I use glass cups because you can um, disinfect them or you yes. can't completely disinfect the silicone. Um, and you create a suction by creating, I, I use um, a cotton ball that's been lit on fire to create a vacuum. Okay. Otherwise, you can get the cups that have the little plug thing that you oh, okay. do to create the suction. And you put it on the skin and you can either put oil on before and kind of rub the cups back and forth and that just feels like a really nice massage mm-hmm. or you can do the kind where you're moving the cups and using the like fire cupping to kind of create a different type of sensation but it definitely mm-hmm. still is kind of a, a um, manipulating the fascia manipulating the muscles mm-hmm. creating more movement through there so it would be like putting a vacuum hose on in a way? Just yeah, if you were gonna, I'm trying to think of any other thing you could think of, but that might be the easiest one. If you put the vacuum hose on your arm or leg or whatever, your skin gets sucked up in there. Yes. That's basically what happens with the cups. Mm-hmm. And if you just kept moving that or kind of rolled it around, you can see how that right. you know, pulls, and pulls it, the skin up yes. and manipulates, Stimulates gets rid it. of those knots. Good. Oh, yeah. And then moxa is an herb. That it comes in various forms, and we use it. It can be very heating for the body, very nourishing for the body, and mm-hmm. it can also take heat out of the body, which is one of those oh, that's weird kind of things. interesting. Yeah, it's one of those weird things about moxibustion. But you light it; it can be very warming. Um, you know, so you'll feel like it. A, it's like a charcoal stick. It's a charcoal stick, but there's also the kind that are not the charcoal. It's a very compressed. It's that's okay. the smokeless moxa. There are the kinds that other colleagues use that are more smoky that come in a stick as well, but they're not the, the compressed kind. Okay. And then you can get the little rolls, the actual grains of moxa, and you okay. can put them on the skin, like the rice grain, or you can make little cones out of them. Mm-hmm. You can put them on the needles. I mean, you can do all sorts of things with moxa. Okay, but you heat it, mm-hmm. you light yeah, it. Yeah, you light it. It gets very, very, very hot. You have to be very careful. And then I just put it close to the, to the body, whether I'm heating the belly or the uterus or... Um, you know, points or points on the legs you can do for energy in general. Um, so, yeah, many different ways to use it, but it's very, it's a very warming, very nourishing um, technique. So it's to stimulate blood flow, mm-hmm. to stimulate movement, to stimulate And to chi- warm, yeah. And to warm. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Um, so what are some of your success stories? Some success stories, a lot of success stories with pain. Um, I think those are the easiest things in Chinese medicine to really create a good effect quickly. You know, people yes. who come in, even after just a couple of treatments, but maybe they're having carpal tunnel syndrome and just have a couple of treatments with the needles and, you know, they can move their fingers a lot more. They have less, you know, less pain that way. I've had patients who have come in with knee stiffness, knee pain, put the needles in just after one treatment, they feel much better getting off the table. Um, sometimes two treatments, and then mm-hmm. they're you know they're kind of go on their way. It's just it's nice to get people in before it gets to be horrible, so you can just kind of give them a little tune up, right. and then get back out there. So it keeps them healthy. Um, obviously, I've had people women who are getting pregnant, and it tends to be those people. I mean, I've my first patient here in Kansas City who I work with for fertility. Um, you know, she had endometriosis. She only had one tube because she didn't have an ectopic pregnancy. She had a fibroid, you know, all this stuff going on. And she didn't want to go through the ART process. And she had a miscarriage before as well. And so, but she was so good. She, you know, came in regularly and she, um, you know, changed her diet. She was a vegan and we'd altered her diet. Okay. And, uh, which is not always necessary, but for her, I thought it was necessary. Um, and then she, um, you know, took herbs very religiously, and within three months, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and her second baby, um, she had no problem at all. That's great. Yeah. So, you know, that's always encouraging. And mm-hmm. there, are, you know, some cases where you work with somebody and it doesn't happen, and then they go away, and a month later you hear. Right. By the way, yeah, I just heard about another patient who is ten weeks pregnant oh my with God. twins naturally. Which is great. And a lot of times it just it's a matter of, you know, yes, we'll try to balance everything we can balance. We'll improve blood flow to the uterus. We'll warm, you know, the uterus if we feel like this area is cold for whatever reason. And these are, you know, Chinese medicine terms. Yeah, these are, you right. Are, you know, walking around with an icy uterus. But um, <laughs> it's sometimes it's just a matter of when your brain and body are finally in the right space. Yes. Sometimes you think they are or you really want them to be, but they're not. Mm-hmm. And it just takes that time. And in other cases, there's just it's just not going to happen because structurally, you know, I can't change the structure of what's going on. Right. But um, so those have been really encouraging. Um, 
And again, sometimes that happens just after a few treatments, and I'm not going to take the credit of any husbands out there or partners out there by any means, but, and sometimes it, it takes longer. Right. Um, trying to think, the placenta previa patient who I worked with, who within two weeks, she was at 37 weeks, and within two weeks we had moved that attachment up, so it was That's no longer a risk. astounding. That was at the very beginning of my career, and I remember thinking, there might wow. be something to this. This is amazing. Because I used all these classic points that are very lifting points, and I gave her a formula. Even though she was pregnant, I felt very quite safe. I chose a very safe formula, but it was a very lifting formula. Mm-hmm. That's and you amazing. Had to think, I think it moved wow. up four centimeters or something like that. That is which amazing. Which is a big deal in the That uterus. is a huge yeah. deal. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, people who say, you know, oh, I used to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom all the time or have more frequency or I'm leaking here and there. And they say, you know, after the treatment, I feel, you know, maybe one, I see sometimes some of my patients, I see them maybe once a month. And Mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, you know, for the first two weeks after the treatment, I really notice a difference. I don't leak or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it starts to wear off because they're, you know, coming once a month. But at least I can try to get them... Some relief. You know, a little relief for sure. Right, absolutely. And then they might see the benefit of it and come Mm -hmm. more often. Right. So do you work with medical doctors, Western medical doctors in the area, um, just coordinate? Not as much yet. That's something I'm still working on as I build my practice. My impression is, I mean, I've met a lot of the reproductive endocrinologists, and, you know, Mm -hmm. they do their thing. They don't, and they do it very well. They don't really care what I do as yeah. long as I'm not mucking around and <laughs> with their stuff. So exactly when they're doing all the, um, you know, the, the different medic or um, drug protocols and things like that that you do during ART, I generally don't prescribe herbs because you're paying a lot of money for those. I don't mm-hmm. want to, even though we don't have any research showing that the herbs might interfere, we don't know for sure. Right. So try to keep it like you do your medicines and then when you're ready... You come to me, and then I'll give you the herbs when that's you when know, you finish you're not with doing that. both. Yeah. Now, just, yeah. just for somebody who might not know, ART assisted, assisted reprodu- reproductive techniques, assisted reproductive techniques mm-hmm. such as IUI, mm-hmm. intrauterine insemination, mm-hmm. uh, IVF, in vitro. In vitro. Okay. Yeah. Good. So these are more in depth type of things that you would you would work with the with the fertility specialists. And so, do you do any education around the area for doctors for Patients. Uh, yeah, starting to do that, starting to go in, do lunch and learns, things like that. Awesome. Um, providing my materials. I try to give them, you know, obviously what I do in my practice, but also the newer research that we're seeing. Mm-hmm. It used to be that acupuncture, they had studied it a lot for the transfer process. So you go in right before and right after you have your um, and this being embryo, the embryo transfer. transfer. Yes. And, you know, there's been various studies. Some studies show, oh, my gosh, the pregnancy rate is so much better than when they don't do it. Other studies have shown, you know, the pregnancy rate isn't much better. So it's all back and forth. And we're and that's, you know, I don't think really acupuncture. You know, mm-hmm. you could just walk in off the street and be like, I'm, I'm going to get my IVF. Can you come before and after? I could do that. But it's not, even though I'm putting needles in, it's mm-hmm. not really acupuncture. So... We're doing seeing more and more research from with Chinese medicine and fertility related to uh, what they call whole systems medicine, where you go, you know, you're doing those three months and you're doing the herbs and you're doing the acupuncture, and you know how do we see those those mm-hmm. people getting pregnant? And the results are are really encouraging, but we you know we just need a lot more research in general. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think you know that could be said of acupuncture, of Reiki, of many right. of these holistic right. things. So, but I think that's coming. Yeah, Don't it's you? definitely coming. It's hard to study these things for sure, but you know we're learning more about them. And I think in general, no one's who's coming in for energy medicine, whatever type it is, is going to leave in a feeling, you know, un, less healthy than when they started. So absolutely, everybody's going to feel better. Right, you're going to feel come. better. You're going to be healthier in general, mm-hmm. um, whether you get pregnant or not. You're going to be healthier in general. So mm-hmm. you're definitely coming out ahead of the game. But obviously, people have their goals, and we want to try to get them to reach their goals. We want to reach their goals. Mm -hmm. Now, um, of course, you know, in in China, in Asia, there's a lot of body of work about Mm -hmm. the efficacy of Chinese medicine. It's been around for, what, a thousand years? Right, right. But often, unfortunately, a lot of those research protocols are um, 
not as strict as they would be in the U.S. Right. They're not as structured. They're a lot not of as, time. you know, double blind. They're not, right. Yeah, and a lot of, anytime you see study results that say, oh, well, 97% of the people had some relief and, you know, 67% had complete resolution of their symptoms and signs. Mm. Then you got to be a little skeptical. And that's what we see. That's a little high. Frequently coming out, of, unfortunately, of that, of China. So, but other studies are coming out and, you know, they're fantastic. And it can be hard to tell the difference. So you just have to, right. you know, really dig into the research if you're into that. Or hopefully your acupuncturist can, you know, talk about that too. And again, if you find somebody who's like, oh my gosh, you know, no worries. Well, I'll be pregnant in a month and this and that. And your pain's going to go away immediately. And... Yeah. You know, well, it's it's a process. It is. So. I think yeah, I would run screaming if that was a Western medicine doctor right. saying that. Yeah. I yeah. wouldn't be so sure about that. You know, I'd have to see it. Um, now, have you ever taken any courses, done any studying in China? Yeah. As in my last year of school, I did an internship. Or not an internship. It was more of a rotation through a Chinese medicine hospital. We were there for about a month and uh, rotated through... A variety of you know cardiology, andrology, urology, oh all the ologies that we could you know that we could pick from, and it's just really fascinating to be in this huge. Everything in China is huge. And this hospital was ginormous, <laughs> and you know one side was the western side and one side was the eastern That's side. Interesting. And they would go back and forth. We were in with a um, in the urology clinic one day, or nephrology, one of the two, and. Um, the, the Chinese doctor, you know, wrote out a script, oh, go see, go get a scan of whatever it was. Uh-huh. And so the guy went over and got a scan and then brought it back up, I don't know how long later, that same day. That never happens here. Never. But uh, it was just really interesting, the, really interesting how they approach medicine because there was no privacy whatsoever. And you'd <laughs> go in and you'd sit by the doctor and there'd be a whole slew of people behind you, basically. <laughs> and you know, they'd take your pulse, and they'd look at your tongue, you know, yeah. it's part of the diagnosis right. uh, in Chinese medicine, and then they'd write out a script, and they have little interns sitting there working on the computer, and it was really, really interesting. But, I mean, we spent all day, or most of the day, in the hospital, and then lectures from doctors and things like that, too. It was, it was really, really fascinating. Oh, I'll bet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, you can't really even duplicate that here. It's, it's right, amazing. Right. And hopefully I'll be able to go back on a regular basis and you know deepen my training and that kind of thing because that's just such an amazing place to do it. Yeah, what I really appreciate about you, Janet, is that you are so knowledgeable. I mean, you uh, just from visiting with you myself, you instructed me on, on diet and you know d- different things post-session and just were so knowledgeable mm-hmm. and explained every step of the way. I think that was really nice and I mm-hmm. really appreciated that. And I can tell that you really enjoy what you do and you really know about it. So, yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, oh, I absolutely. Enjoy it. That's one of the things I like about Chinese medicine too is that I know I'll be learning mm-hmm. about it forever which I want in my career. I never want to get to the point where I'm like, I'm just going to put the needles in and I'm going to have some coffee over here and not worry about it. I want to be learning all the time how it works and how I can improve my my treatments for my patients because it's really all about, you know, getting them healthier. And the more I can add in, because we know even in Western medicine, the lifestyle aspect of it is so huge. I mean, to me, that's the foundation, the diet, which doesn't mean you know, eating an elimination diet, but how you eat and how you sleep, how you exercise, how you handle stress. To me, that's the core of everybody. And if that is messed up, how can you build your house, whether it's your, you know, family house or your athletic house or whatever it is? How can you build your house on that if your foundation is really wobbly because of those things? Absolutely. You can go see every specialist, every type of medicine every type of um, treatment but if you're not taking care of yourself you know what's the point right right just i know it can be hard to do but even for those of us in the and you know who are trying to help people (laughs) it can be hard for us as well absolutely (laughs) (laughs) well janet thank you so much Thank for you. Visiting it was so tonight. fun to do this. Yes, it's really, really a lot of fun. So um, if somebody wants to schedule an appointment with you, how do they do that? They can get me through my website. Uh, they can email me. Now, at, what is your website? It's Vitality Holistic Medicine. Vitality you, Holistic com. Medicine. Thank you very much. And my email is J- Janet Lee acu acu at gmail.com. And it's Janet Lee, L-E-E, mm-hmm. A-C-U. 
at gmail.com or they can call me at 917-855-1579. Okay. It's a New York number, but it is in Kansas City, Missouri. It so. is in Kansas City, Missouri. We can <laughs> put those in the show notes as yeah, well. Yeah. We can do that. And you practice again at Centered Spirit mm-hmm. in Kansas City in the Waldo District and in Lawrence, Kansas, mm-hmm. which is about 45 minutes from Kansas yeah. City. Yeah. And then um, what type of hours do you have? Um, it varies. I'm, it's very flexible, but I typically tend to be, I'm in typically in Lawrence on Monday and Wednesday afternoon and evenings mm-hmm. and one Saturday a month mm-hmm. and the rest of the time I can be here. Great. So here definitely in, Tuesday, in Thursday and Fridays and then some Saturdays. So. And then you do evenings as well. Yeah. 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 Try to yeah. accommodate my patients as much as possible with their yeah. schedules. It's kind of hard to get in to different places, but I love yeah. that alternative health and alternative mm-hmm. modalities do make time on the weekends and evenings yeah. when Western yeah. medicine does not. Exactly. So fantastic. So you're easy to reach and you're easy to schedule with. And again, thank you so much. This thank is you. so Appreciate much it. fun. Certainly. Radiate Wellness is a community of holistic and alternative healers and consultants based in the Kansas City area dedicated to helping you create spiritual, energetic, and physical well-being. To learn more about our practitioners, services, classes, and events, or to schedule an appointment, visit us at radiatewellnesscommunity.com.